Oh, oh, that's our cue to go, oh. I believe. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special, <laughs> special uh, edition of Retro Blist. We are thrilled to join you with our stunning faces. Uh, I, that's yeah. That's Trevor just digging for gold over there. Let's hope he strikes some oil. <laughs> that's the other end. That's the other end. <laughs> <laughs> high class oh. show high class show uh thank you for joining us everybody to the fives of people who will watch this we very much appreciate <laughs> it it means a lot to us trevor this is retro bliss going live with actual video for the first time ever this is so far above my ability and pay grade i just want to say that yeah special shout out to our producer and buddy chris for uh being, you, you won't hear him he's he's hidden himself but he's the reason we're even able to do this. So thank you to Chris uh, uh, and thank you to all the people listening. Trevor, what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to cover our top 10 arcade games, which is a little surprising if you listen to the show, because uh, why do I always say about arcade games? <laughs> that you never got to play any. Yeah, I, I just didn't get to play a lot of arcade games, but it made for a fun list and uh, we'll get into some of the reasons why. Um, yes. But yeah. I, arcade, I just I have to say arcade games for me they're special because it is something I kind of missed out on but I but I saw them and then I saw them later <laughs> this sounds really pathetic but later they would be turned into games you know my Super Nintendo or Genesis and and later the Saturn and Dreamcast so seeing these games in the arcade and then seeing my home systems be able to play them later just made them extra special but I did spend a lot of time actually playing these games um that's just the way my family was. We would save up and buy the home home game. We wouldn't play them in the arcade. I kind of regret that now, but uh, it made for an interesting list. Um, I, I'll just go and say, Johnny, I was very honest with my list. Um, I didn't just pick the ones that I thought, well, this is one of the greatest arcade games I got included. I'm very honest. These are the ones that I would go play the most right now. That's really all I went on. Yeah, this uh, my parents loved me, so I got to actually play yeah, these yeah. games in the arcade. You would beat much less frequently too. <laughs> yeah. I mean. yeah, much less frequently, though. Though at times, <laughs> you know, whacka whacka. <laughs> um, but I deserved it every time, every time. But oh, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you on this, Trevor. Uh, this is my personal list. This is yeah. not a list of like if you go to some uh, uh, hoity toity uh, magazine professional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good word. Professional. These are not. Prof- no. Even though we are the definitive voices of all uh, redneck retro gaming. Yep. Uh, you know, this is our personal list. This is the ones that we love, and as we're going along, we would love for you all to like start naming some ones that maybe we don't mention, or ones that really stood out to you uh, as you were growing up, or or even now. Uh, but yeah, Trevor, a lot of these games they're on my list. I did. I was very fortunate to get to play uh, at one point or another in the arcade, uh, and I've obviously went back and played them since too. So uh, I'm very excited for this. It's time for some good old arcade action, Trevor. Yeah, and uh, Johnny, just so you know, if there's any comments you want me to know about, you'll have to let me know because I'm recording on my phone, so I can't say anything besides your face. Well, that's where we're. Uh, that's where we would probably need our uh, <laughs> producer to <laughs> tell us because I'm not looking at that either. I'm like, I got my list up, which is on my phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> not so Chris. Well, we're if, uh, so Chris, if you uh, see any comments you feel we need to know, please chip in at some point. Um, all right, there you go. There's just beautiful tones there. Okay, um, <laughs> you know, let's let's get into our honorable mentions. What do you think, Trevor? Yeah, I mean. I just have one. Do you have one? I have one. I have one no. honorable mention. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, goals and ghosts. Uh, I obviously fl- uh, pretty uh, freaking hard game. Even uh, yeah. when it went to home consoles, I don't think they <laughs> made it any easier. Uh, I played it way more in a home console, but I did experience it a couple times in the arcade. In this game, I don't know why, because I usually detest a game it's so hard it's ridiculous yeah well for whatever reason even though i never even got past the first level in the arcade when i was a kid i loved just the way this game looked uh even the music uh, just everything about it just really appealed appealed to me and to this day i, I could go back and play some goals and ghosts even though uh, i won't get very far i never uh even honestly saw ghouls and ghosts in the arcade until a few years ago at the beach 
they had the machine there. And from what I remember, it's very similar to the NES port. Like I, from what I remember, but yeah, I, I couldn't include it because I really only played it on the NES. Um, so yeah, my honorable mention is a shame. That's an honorable mention. Uh, cause this is probably like top three material, but I just have to be honest, this game to my knowledge, never got a home port. And so I barely played it. It was amazing the twice I got to play it, but that's the Simpsons by Konami. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it's just an awesome multiplayer game four player, at least I think, but it is. yeah, I mean, I barely played it. So it has to be an honorable mention. Yeah, I understand that completely. I am also going to say that this is purely because I only got to experience it later, uh, and it wasn't in the arcade. That's on why. That's the only reason it's not on my list because it's a very fun game. Uh, it's got a great. I mean, it really captures the show very well, sense of humor wise. Yeah. It's a beat 'em up at the same time from Konami, uh, so you're not going to go wrong there. Uh, but yeah. it's that's why it's not on my list. I didn't get to experience it in the arcade. I only actually even saw the machine a couple times. It was very, it was like yeah. a rare thing down here in North Carolina for some reason. Yeah, it's not like we had a massive arcade around here. There right. were machines here and there, is what we basically got. Yeah, we were so, littered with small arcades. Yeah, pretty much is where it goes. Are we ready for our top 10, Trevor? Let's do it. Um, yeah, I think I'm going first. I think it's what we decided before this. <laughs> I can't see anything besides your face, so I'm just going to assume whatever is on the screen is what is on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're flying by the seat of our pants. Uh, wouldn't have it any other way. Here we go. My number 10 game on my favorite arcade games ever uh, is Rampage. Oh. I love Rampage. I even love it. Uh, probably my fondest memory is playing it with you and Derek when you got it for your birthday, which is not arcade. But I did play in the arcade anytime yeah, I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just love you get to be a monster, tearing down buildings. Uh, how's that not fun? You know, I, I grew yeah. up loving Godzilla movies, and this is a video game was kind of the equivalent of being Godzilla in a way. Yeah, uh, I I love this game. It's so much fun. I mean, you even get, <laughs> you get to destroy <laughs> things and uh, eat people out of buildings. Uh, I mean, that's every that's every Johnny's dream. <laughs> Yeah, this game, honestly, is probably a lot better than the arcade. It's just, it's made for the arcade. The Sega Saturn version I had, we loved, but it's not really the kind of game we want to play for two hours straight. Right. So it kind of makes sense in the arcade. I think that's a good choice. My number 10 is going to start a trend that a lot of my games share and that I played it at least once in the arcade for to qualify for my list, but I played it a lot more at home. My number 10, Johnny will not agree with, is Virtua Cop 2. Uh, Virtua Cop, of course, a light gun shooter from Sega. The sequel came out in 1995 uh, in the arcade. And um, it's just, it's one of those games that just is visceral fun. Um, I remember just shooting out cars and shooting out the windows. And you just, you can shoot like a motorcycle 30 times before it explodes. And its wheels start flying off. (laughs) At the time, it was, it felt like you were really doing it. You didn't realize it was just pre-canned animation. but me and my brother just played the far out of the Sega Saturn version, which was pretty faithful. Um, so that's my number 10. And Johnny, you love light gun games. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't hate that one. Um, I'm not a giant fan of gun games. I don't know why. It's not like I have anything against them or anything. I just probably because I was never good at them. And if I'm not good at something, yeah. I have a hard time getting into it. That's just me, uh, which yeah. is why I'm not into very many things. <laughs> That's why I don't play basketball anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't play basketball anymore either because I got bad at it uh, <laughs> when I used to be good at it. So I quit. That's what I do. I'm a quitter. That's who I am. And, no. who I, <laughs> and I'm going to be true to myself. A quitter. All right. Number nine for me. <laughs> <laughs> My number nine, Trevor. I think you will appreciate this one because we're going to hit the streets and we're going to go cruising USA. Trevor. Oh, man. My favorite memory yeah. of this game is that we have – I don't even know if we still have it. I mean, I know this, I know it's, uh, it's been a forever since I've been there, but we had a CC's pizza, uh, yep. in, in near us that had a really small, I mean, it was really small arcade in the, like a back room or something, Yeah, which had, which had what, maybe five games in it. Maybe. maybe one of those was cruising USA at one point for Cruise whatever reason. Down. And I loved it. <laughs> uh, I played it all the time. Uh, I don't even think I was that good at it. Which is really strange because when I got older and we played it before the show, I think we covered this on the show, didn't we? I know we meant to if we didn't. Um, 
but I I played it recently for whatever reason, and it was nowhere near as hard as I remember. Uh, but it's a fun game, just really arcadey yeah. action, uh, and it was just fun getting to choose different cars and stuff. And uh, I was always excited when somebody had like the different the new cars unlocked, and you could just pick yeah. one of them. Uh, so that was always fun for me. But so Cruise and USA is my number nine. That's a good pick, and you just made me think of a game I probably would put on my list, but because. These are preloaded on our list now. I'm not going to change it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the game? Just out of curiosity. Well, when you said cruising, I thought San Francisco Rush. Oh uh, uh, yeah. See, I wouldn't have Rush included that. Just, in particular. Yeah. See, but I only remember that playing it on your Dreamcast. That's true. I don't actually yeah. remember playing an arcade, so we're good. Yeah. So yeah. Fantastic game though. So my number nine, um, surprise, surprise, has home ports, um, and that is Outrun. Outrun is just, uh, it's like, it's Sega at their most 80s in a good way. See, it was 1986. I read that this was the first sit-down arcade cabinet, or at least the first one that was like kind of deluxe. Like you're sitting down in a seat, like a car seat. Um, It was the first game of that type. And it's just colorful. The music is wonderful. It runs so smooth. Um, I played a lot of Rad Racer on the NES. And I think it owes everything to OutRun. Um, I played it on the Master System, the Sega Genesis. And then I played the uh, pro tip for listeners. The Sega Ages games um, is Sega's branding for like remastering these old games. On the Switch, and I assume the other consoles as well, you can download OutRun, uh, the Sega Ages version. And it's an arcade perfect port, and it's a great game. It still holds up. Um, so it's like five bucks to download. I recommend it. That's Outrun. Yeah, Outrun's a great game. I definitely got to play it a few times. I really like it. Uh, I was trying to decide, honestly, between it and Cruising, uh, and I just had more experience with Cruising. That's why I went with it. Yeah. Uh, so my number eight, Trevor. This game uh, not only saved Nintendo, but it also uh, jump-started later on in the 90s, a franchise that you adore. I'm going to go with Donkey Kong. Oh. The original Donkey Kong. Uh, where poor Mr. Jumpman Mario himself is trying to <laughs> save the princess as this angry giant ape is just hurling and hurling, hurling. <laughs> he's hurling out of his mouth barrels. He's vomiting. He's vomiting barrels towards <laughs> poor Mario. And Mario's got to jump these barrels to get to the princess. I, for whatever reason, I love this game from the first time I saw it. And I was like, I have to play this. And I still remember when I was in the arcade and I actually finally beat the first level. And then I got to get to the second level, which I didn't beat. But I remember <laughs> that, just the, the joy that I had. Because this game in the arcade, uh, for whatever reason, I just couldn't get the it's – it's literally so easy now. I mean, I can yeah. play and go through it, you know, 100 times. But, you know, when I was a kid and I was first playing this, this game was tough. And uh, I, don't, I always try to get that hammer to, you know, to try to save myself. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love that Donkey Kong. And I even like Donkey Kong Jr., but I never got to play it in the arcade. That was – on my NES, but yeah, Donkey Kong, my number eight. So here's where I just go ahead and say flat out, I had to make a decision, like I mentioned before, am I going to go with the games that I know are probably the greatest and most influential or the ones that I've actually spent a lot of time with? And Donkey Kong is a great game, but I've only played it spots here and there, the NES version. Um, So I just didn't feel like I could include it. (laughs) Instead, my number eight is probably not quite the same level of classic status. And it's Neo Turf Masters. Um, This is an amazingly fun golf game by Nazca and SNK. And I don't have a physical version to show you, but I do have my Neo Geo little arcade here. And this has uh, Neo Turf Masters on it. And this is just like the perfect arcade golf game because it is so easy to play, but it's got enough depth that the harder holes are frustratingly hard because it eats your quarters you know it has to eat your quarters and this is a game that has an arcade perfect port or close to it on the switch and that's where i played it 90 percent of the time um i feel like it also goes by another name and now i can't remember what it is uh neo turf masters well it doesn't matter i don't remember what the other name it goes by is open tournament golf maybe i can't remember 1996 uh one of the first of two arcade games by nazca uh, who was later bought by SNK and the other games also on my list. So we'll get to that later. 
turf master sounds like what you go to college to get your degree in to learn about yeah. the ground <laughs> that's why i plant really nice grass I mean. yeah uh, yeah i got my uh masters in turf um i'm going to go with my for my number seven trevor i don't know if this is going to surprise you or not so i hope you're sitting down which you are because i can see the chair that's oh, a good okay. thing that's a good thing my number seven is another classic and that's mm. galaxian oh i went with this game because i was trying to decide between this and space invaders well, let's so be honest not, it's no neo turf masters but go ahead no it's no it's none of that i mean it's not even close <laughs> i can't even compete with that <laughs> but there was this uh this little cafe restaurant that wasn't too far from where i grew up and when during the summer when i was helping my dad do like uh, do like odd jobs and stuff we would always stop there for for breakfast and they had this machine in there and i'd get to play it every once in a while and i love this game it's so fun uh this is a recurring theme i was never good at it <laughs> i got to where i could get decently far uh but i did like this game a lot so galaxian uh to me was the better version of space invaders for me personally space invaders is a fun game too but I just thought Galaxian just played better personally, and I just enjoy it more. And it just brings back a lot of fond memories of that diner for some reason. And here's another game that I played on compilations and collections. And I remember when we went to get pizza and different things, it was always there and looked like fun. But again, being honest to myself. So my number seven is probably a, a bigger classic. Like if you just go with, you know, true classic status, bigger than Space Invaders or Galaxian. And that's Daytona, USA. Um, the Sega Saturn version was not an arcade perfect port, and I have played it in the arcade, and it's a great game in the arcade. Uh, of course, the Sega Saturn version is one I played the most, but it's just a huge cabinet and just surround sound, if I remember correctly. Um, just, and at the time, beautiful graphics. And what was it, 40 cars could be on that circle track. Just and the Rex, it's just, it was one of the big deluxe arcade machines. And so getting to play it, I mean, it probably cost what, 75 cents or a dollar. Uh, getting to play it was a treat. Um, and yeah, that is all I have to say about that. Daytona USA. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. I'm going to shock you. My number six is also Daytona USA. Daytona. Oh. Uh, I also it's love this game. Way. It's very fun, and you mentioned something very important. The fact that you could have a lot of other cars on the track was a big deal for us uh, yeah. growing up, for for all three of us. I'm going to throw your brother into this, too. Uh, yeah. I remember being blown away when the NASCAR games would finally have, uh, you know, close to 30 to 40 cars on the track at once. That was a big yeah. deal for us. It's a lot mm -hmm. more fun racing against 40 than it is racing against five or six. It just is. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Daytona USA did a great job of that, just being very arcadey stock car racing fun uh and man what a fun game and this was literally yeah. uh, this game got really popular i do remember seeing it in quite oh, a few yeah. different arcades even down here which is how i got to play it a couple times yeah but it was one of the more expensive arcade games you're right yeah yeah it was just it was a big deal at the time and it was, a, it was still at that time when sega could put out an arcade game that blew away anything you could see on the home console which was yeah. also that's probably um, during yeah. the last. That's probably during the last era where they could kind of do that, where the arcades, yeah, were uh, better graphically than what you could get at home, and then right, right. near right after this, it kind of that kind of changed. Right. Yeah. So that was your number six, and my number seven. Awesome. My number six is not a game that I can show you a physical copy of because I've only played it in the arcade. I don't understand why this never came to a home console. And that's X Men. Oh. Not not uncanny X Men. <laughs> Da -da 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 -da. but uh the four player um i think it was four player right it was yeah the giant yeah. cabinet it was a giant cabinet this is the same one i'm thinking of yes it's it's the one where you're all there together the giant cabinet yeah spread i think out it might long. be six player right is it six it player? might be because it, it was there was something special about it it was a huge yeah. cabinet it, was a huge, it had three huge. screens right am i imagining that no like i think three, you're right yeah it's a, it a giant cabinet yes and we're trying to say the, we're trying to say the cabinet is huge. I don't know if you guys are getting this. The cabinet was bigger than a small cabinet. <laughs> it was also think, bigger than a medium size. If you cabinet. see a medium cabinet, think bigger. Yes, it was smaller than an extra large cabinet. Yes. Um, 
<laughs> Konami. I mean, this may or may not be the first time or the last time they're going to show up on my list. Konami knew what it was doing in the 90s with arcade games. And this is just yeah. one I don't have a ton of experience with, but it was a joy every time I played it. So that's my I'm, number six X-Men. I'm going to say that Konami at one point was one of my all-time favorite uh, game publishers uh, because they, they made some great games with some great franchises. And, and, <laughs> and it makes me really sad uh, what they're doing now. Uh, that's just me personally. I'm not throwing shade. Well, I guess I am. Take that, Konami. Do I'll throw some shade. It's, it's real sad. It really is. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. number five, Trevor, uh, number five for me is, that's where we're at, right? I'm doing these numbers right. Yep. Okay, yep. good. On top of it. Number five, I'm going with Street Fighter 2. Uh, uh, yeah, I played this a lot in the arcades. Uh, I was even one of those uh, one of those kids who would uh, get in like I, a few times. This didn't happen a lot because most of the time, if a game had people at it, I would just go play a different game. Uh, but this is one yeah. of those few games where every once in a while, I was like, you know what? I got next, I'm like one of those types of games. See yeah. if I can beat somebody. And I rarely ever did win, but I do remember the few times that I would pull out the victory somehow. And it was big moments for me where I beat another person at something. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell by looking at me, a uh, winner is not how I would describe this. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Street Fighter 2, man, what a great game. That's uh, That was probably one of the first uh, fighting games that was set up the way that one was set up, where it was 1v1 type of deal. And yeah. uh, it really stuck to me to the point where I remember when Mortal Kombat came out, and I've since obviously played Mortal Kombat, but uh, I was a Street Fighter 2 guy, and that was who I sided with. Like, I would argue against yeah. the Mortal Kombat guys because I was a Street Fighter 2 guy. Uh, that's just how I was. So, Street Fighter 2, my number five. So, Street Fighter 2, probably of every game not on my list, is a game that I know would and should be there. But I'm not a big fighting game fan, and my memory of Street Fighter 2 is going to the substation shop and it playing in the background. And then- <laughs> that wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ghost we keep in the room of uh, <laughs> that music playing <clears throat> and hearing Hadouken, Hadouken. Yeah. Well, I'm eating my sandwich with my mom and grandma and my brother. But guess what? We never actually put the quarter in and played it because, because stupidity. I don't you know, know why. You know, what's weird but. to me. This is a true story. And I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but uh, you nor your brother, from what I, I remember, you or your brother from what i remember because i definitely never played street fighter games with either of you we're not giant street fighter fans or fighting game fans we played mortal kombat like a couple times uh but that was just us trying to just literally use that little cheap uh, tri- uh tripping thing the the only fighting game i put a lot of time into was marvel versus capcom 2 yeah. oh yeah oh yeah for sure yes for the dreamcast which was amazing and then like yeah. power stone and soul caliber yes you know uh which yeah. uh but back to the Street Fighter 2 thing, what blows me away is I don't remember either of you playing that one very much even at all. If you did, it wasn't with me. And no. yet, that's been uh, Derek, uh, part of Derek's Xbox screen name forever. <laughs> so, the, yeah, yeah. The Hadouken. Uh, so I, I don't know how you come up with it. it must Honestly, be from, it's from, I know it's from that sub shop. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's a strong be. memory. We it's This was our favorite restaurant in the world, and we went there. Did we like close on a regular down? basis, and, and that was always playing in the background, but we, we never really played it. <laughs> did we ridiculous. close it down like we did other restaurants? <laughs> no, it's still open, but they took out the machine. Oh, yeah. We closed the Sad, machine but... down. Uh, true yeah. story. I don't know if we said this on the show, but Trevor and I, there literally had a streak of where we'd go to a restaurant yep. and eat it, and then literally within weeks, it closed down. It's ridiculous, yeah. We some places I really list. liked. Yeah, there's yeah. some great ones. <laughs> All right. So that was your number five? Yes, it was. So my number five is a game that I can confidently put on my list. But it's only because I know the home port is similar to the arcade game. Cause I don't really remember playing it much in the arcade or even seeing it much, but I just, this game's so much fun. Sunset riders. Um, the arcade version was four player. Uh, the super Nintendo one, which I mostly played is two player. It also had a Genesis version, which was a little different. Uh, 1991 Konami. So Konami's back at it again. Um, oh man, this, this game, to me, is like if you took the Ninja Turtles but made it, mixed it with Contra. That's basically what this feels like because it feels like the Konami Turtles games, but it's a shooter. Uh, it's just so much fun. The Wild West setting is so much fun. Um, I think it's just one of the best run and gun type games. And I don't hear as much about it as like Contra. I mean, it's nowhere near as popular, but I think it's just fantastic. 
I so, think it's still I think it's still considered a classic. I definitely remember playing this yeah. over at your house. Uh, it's definitely a fun game for sure. I mean, this is this is uh, to me this is Konami showing that it knows what it's doing because this wasn't really, per my knowledge, based on anything. Uh, like it I wasn't don't think a, so. based on any franchise or anything. So they they just knew what they were doing. Oh yeah. All right, my number four. I'm going back to a classic, Trevor, and this one is purely for the memories. Uh, Miss Pac-Man is my number four. Yep. This is a game that Dad would actually play with me when we go to an arcade, uh, and I think that's why I have such a fond memory of it. Uh, we've mentioned this before on our podcast uh, that uh, parent when our parents would play games with us, it really kind of stays in your memory. It burns there, yeah, for all the right reasons. And I just remember watching Dad go because you had to take turns, obviously, and Dad yeah. would usually go first, and he was so good at it. And I would always want to at least try to get near where he got to. And I don't think I ever beat him in Pac-Man. I probably yeah. could now, or at Miss Pac-Man. And it was always Miss Pac-Man. We rarely, in our area, uh, had regular Pac-Man machines. It was almost yeah. always Miss Pac-Man. And uh, so I, it has a special place in my soul. So uh, Miss Pac-Man, my number four. So I have a confession to make, and I've never admitted this to anybody. I've tried to play Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man on multiple occasions, and I enjoy it for a few minutes but I've never really been able to get into it. It kind of, I don't want to say it stresses me out, but I've never actually been able to really commit to Pac-Man. Like, I don't know if it's a deficiency in me or if it's just uh, a deficiency in me. So I'm not sure which of this. It's going to be one or the other. Yeah, one or the other. So your number four was Miss Pac-Man, which makes a lot of sense. My number three, I know you don't care for this game. I mean, your number four. Oh, number four. Sorry. Oh, never mind. Forget what I just said. My number four. This game, uh, 1994 Sega, was one of those games that when you saw it in the arcade, you thought, I hope one day we can play a game this good at home Um, because it was so gorgeous. And that is Sega Rally Championship. Now, this game is probably a perfect arcade game because even on the Saturn port, there's like three, uh, (laughs) I think there's three tracks. I think the arcade only had two, if I remember right. But even with just three tracks on the home port, it's just infinitely re- re- replayable. Re- 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 replayable. Re- 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 uh, re- it's just, uh, it was a beautiful game in the arcade. The controls, in my opinion, for an arcade style racing game, the, I don't even know how to put it, the finesse, the elegance of the controls in Sega Rally Championship have never been bettered, really, for what it is. It's arcadey, but it's not just like, complete over-the-top arcade like san francisco rush or cruising i hope hope my future wife describes me the way you just described this game yeah i hope so too johnny (laughs) Uh, my wife did describe me this way until i started doing stuff like this on facebook live but (laughs) (laughs) but uh, i do have a memory of this game too i never actually got to play it which is why it's not on my list but i would literally watch it on a loop uh, anytime my parents took me to kmart (laughs) There was a yep. Kmart near here that had this game uh, up n- towards the registers. And so I would literally just watch it go. I was like, man, I wish I was playing this. But my parents were always yep. in a hurry to get out of there, so I never <laughs> never played it. I-, I will say I'm starting to feel a little bit guilty right now that my arcade list is starting to seem a little bit like a Sega Saturn love fest. Um, look at this, though. Hills Department Store. This game is fifty seven ninety seven. I don't even know what Hills Department Store is. I don't even remember a Hills Department uh, Store. I know I didn't pay that for it because I didn't buy it new, but yeah. anyway. You know, <laughs> you, uh, uh, back in the day, if Trevor ever paid full price for a game, I was think he wasn't feeling well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just did. <laughs> uh, my number three, we're getting to our top three, Trevor. This oh, is exciting. This is exciting. Uh, I, yes. I bet you're shocked that I haven't mentioned this game yet because you've mentioned it, and that's X-Men. Uh, of course, I had oh. to have X-Men in my top three. Uh, not only is it a you know based on a franchise that I love in the first place, uh, and I got to play a Cyclops. That's a double bonus for me in this game. Uh, but man, what a fun beat 'em up, right? Uh, yeah. How fun is this? And you can play with like up to five more of your friends, I believe. So X Men, what a game! What a game! Yeah, totally agree. So my number three is the one I was saying that I know you're not going to agree, mostly because you just really don't like the subject matter this is based on. My number three is NBA Jam. Oh, can't stand it. <laughs> yeah. So NBA Jam, I do remember playing in the arcade <laughs> at the skate rink with my homeschool group. 
for our Valentine's Day skate-a-thon. This, I remember playing this game. This is the saddest sentence I've ever heard. <laughs> and let, let me let me complete the picture a little better. So the Valentine's Day homeschool skate a thon, which by the way, these are like roller skates, not roller blades. Or at least that's what I use. Um we were roller we skate, made, Is there a difference between roller skates and roller blades? I genuinely don't know. Skates have four wheels, they're like old fashioned. Okay, like, and like a shoe with four wheels, and roller blades are like a, you know, just a line. Oh, okay, got you, got you. I can't believe I'd explain that, but nobody really talks about skates or blades anymore. <laughs> but during these homeschool, uh, I don't know if I talked about this on the actual podcast or not, but we would make all the homeschoolers would make their own Valentine's Day boxes. Like I remember, mine was a log cabin with little uh, <laughs> cotton balls on the roof to look like snow. <laughs> And all the other homeschoolers, girl or boy, we go around and drop a uh, little uh, Valentines in the boxes. This, 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 yeah. this, this is just the saddest picture that's ever been painted in the history of sad pictures. <laughs> while while out of date contemporary Christian music was played over the loudspeakers, which I never liked, even when I you know even then, it just wasn't my kind of music. Um, but this may surprise you. Me and my brother felt a little bit too cool for it, just a little bit at a certain point. And so we would, we would basically go and hang out and play NBA jam. Um, I have to ask this, this. one. I remember we actually got the quarters and we actually got to play it. And it's I, have, just, I, I have to ask, blast. I have to yeah. ask Trevor at this, uh, Valentine's day homeschool, uh, skate a thon. Yes. Where you had to make your own box for people to put Valentine's in. Yes. Did you actually? Did you actually get Valentine's? I did, but it was not really special because you were supposed to put one in everybody's box. Boy, girl, that's, that's didn't what matter. I that's what I so like, it was never special. Like, like, oh, this person really likes me, but it might be Billy Bob. So that's like it. So for so I'm thinking that's for like if you're if you went to a public school like me and you got your yearbook, that's when the people who would sign, hey, have a great summer. And that's all they would sign. It's kind right. of so let me put it this way: I, I never got a very personal message um in mind yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but i was an overweight kid wearing roller skates uh playing nba jam so yeah you've changed so much yeah. since then i've really changed yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i don't wear roller skates now so yeah you probably grew out of those <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah so nba jam was your number three yeah your number four right no that was uh, your number three number three, three. yeah yeah top three yeah All right. my number two this may shock you because i have two okay. games that I love. Uh, they're probably my top ten of regular games. So this is this was tough. I had I went back and forth. Uh, there was a war inside of me uh, uh, over which one would go f- number one and number two. But I had to, I had to do this. Number two for me is the Ninja Turtles arcade game. Wow! I I'm remember surprised. I remember playing it uh, when I went on a school trip in seventh grade at a public school. Uh, where we weren't forced to put, <laughs> where we were not forced to, you know, go skating and put Valentine's and other kids' uh, boxes that they made. Uh, <laughs> and we got to go to a Chuck E. Cheese. It was the first time I got to go to a Chuck E. Cheese. Loser. So that, it was when I was in middle school. And I was very excited about this. And then I was even more excited when they had this game in that Chuck E. Cheese. And yeah. that's where I literally spent all the extra money I had. <laughs> was on this turtles <laughs> game. And I played it with a couple of my buddies. Uh, it's such a great memory. And then, of course, I've got to play it a bunch of times since then. Uh, so the Ninja Turtles arcade game is my number two. That that surprises me a little bit. Um, my number two, where is it? Oh, <laughs> my number two, I feel a little guilty over because it's not. I guarantee you don't expect it, but I just had to think again. What just excites me right now, the thought of going in to my favorite pizza restaurant and that arcade is there and I'm just going to play it. And this is uh, Samurai Showdown. No, I think it's the same company though. This is the other game by NASCA slash SNK. And that's metal slug. Yeah. And it could really be any of them. I don't even remember how many there were in the arcade, probably six or seven, but it is on my little arcade machine here. Um, There was, it's been on a lot of different consoles, but metal slug is just to me, when I first saw this game, is at a laundromat. Uh, there was a time when we went to laundromat often, and 
it is one we got to play a little bit. Played it more once it came to the PlayStation, but and that just for so people know because I don't know if people are aware now. A laundromat is where you would take all your clothes to a guy named Matt and he'd wash them for you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's also where you got your money printed. Um, <laughs> but just <laughs> I remember seeing this game being played and thinking Contra is awesome, but holy cow, this is better than Contra. I actually remember thinking that because it's just it is ridiculously detailed. You're shooting. I mean, it's a run and gun shooter. It's very much a contra knockoff. I mean, I'll say it, but it's a two player run and gun where you're hopping in tanks, you're hopping in submarines, you're throwing grenades through the air as fast as you can chuck them. You got enemies hovering from the air. You've got digging out of the ground and you're shooting. The, it looks like the most detailed, I don't know, like mad magazine comic you can imagine, but I just remember thinking this game is so far above any other 2D run and, st- run and gun style game and that I just couldn't believe I hadn't heard about it before. Um, and it's just still a blast today. So it's not a traditional choice for number two, um, but I feel pretty good about it for pure fun factor. Yeah, you mentioned something too that really made me think. In our area here, for whatever reason, if there was a pizza place, and that's this is Pizza Hut or like even like your – a local pizzeria type place and they had an arcade game it was almost always metal slug or samurai showdown for whatever reason yeah yeah they uh they snk i guess did a good job getting these out there because i don't feel like they're talked about as much now but they were really popular for a while yeah for, so for whatever reason i always wanted to play samurai showdown because i literally saw it every time i went to a, a pizza hut around here yeah. uh, for the longest time um all right number one trevor we're going to our number ones no uh this game uh came out at a perfect time for me uh Mm -hmm. this is when i discovered that i love basketball when i was a a young lad and this is when i became a giant nba fan so nba jam comes out and it's this arcade game where you could dunk from the free throw line doing ridiculous dunks yeah and you could catch on fire uh and i could play as actual basketball players that i knew because i was I was one of the, you know, I consider myself a very knowledgeable NBA fan even back then. Uh, <laughs> so I could play as the Charlotte Hornets, you know, which has always been my team, even when we weren't good, which is almost always. And <laughs> I love NBA Jam. It's a part of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time it gets re-released, I will buy it. Yeah. Uh, I just can't help it. I hope they do a redo of it with, like, with current rosters even. Uh, so bring it back. I need some NBA Jam in my life. There was rumors yeah. going around that they were going to bring it back, and then of course, it, obviously, it hasn't happened. So uh, I miss it. I love NBA Jam, and then Tournament Edition as well, of course. But NBA Jam, yeah. my number one arcade game, Trevor. NBA Jam was the last time that I remember caring about what team I picked in a basketball game. Yeah, like actually, I looked at the stats and I actually cared. Like I liked the Bulls at the time, and even though I don't think Jordan was in it no. because he had his own license. Right. I had to be the. I love to be the Bulls. Um, I remember the Hornets. Yeah. Anyways, just yeah, it was awesome. My number one. Um, I can't find. There it is. I cheated a little bit, and uh, that is 1989. Of course, Turtles the arcade game, and then also Turtles in Time, which I've not played much in the arcade, but I think it was really similar to the Super Nintendo version, which is amazing. So. I don't know if I can pick one, but if that's cheating, then I guess it's the arcade game. I'm going to tell you. Usually, I don't allow cheating. Uh, I'm, I'm a stickler for everything. But in you this are, case, yeah. since it's Ninja Turtles, I'm going to allow it. Yeah, I mean, I just had to be honest. I mean, I didn't have Pac-Man on my list or Space Invaders or Donkey Kong. But Ninja Turtles is an easy number one. I mean, yeah. they – I definitely played them way more at home than in the arcade. But they wouldn't exist without the arcade version. And these are some of my best – most fun times best memories with you and my brother um and they definitely still hold up because that same awesome arcade beach is called a uh, warp zone in the north myrtle beach mall please check them out if you get a chance everything's a quarter they've got awesome machines they have the manhattan project machine they got the turtles arcade game they did i say manhattan project i meant turtles in time but they also have a manhattan project machine which i didn't even know existed i, I that's what's blowing me away i didn't know that was a thing yeah, but they had them all there, a quarter. And, yeah, just an awesome place. But Turtles, Turtles in Time, my favorite arcade game of all time. Sweet. So there you have it. There's our top ten 
favorite arcade games uh comment down below if you see one oh see one if you heard one that you liked also or if we didn't mention one uh that you love please feel free to put that in the comment below we'll definitely read them or at least trevor will i'm very full of myself and only do things yeah. when i need to uh but uh, we very much appreciate all of you for stopping by i'm sure at least one or two of you check this out we very much appreciate yeah. it uh shout out to producer chris for helping us out here uh we very uh, we definitely appreciate him we would not have been able to do this with that with that yeah. for sure i'm recording on a phone on top of my board game boxes i, I can't do this alone yeah we're Let's we, we can't do a lot of things alone we still have to hold each other's hands going to the bathroom just in case yes uh so thank you everybody trevor you got anything else we want to we want to leave the people with no except that another full episode is coming as soon as we can get it done as soon as we can start playing animal crossing and play some other dadgum game yeah uh like link to the past which is our next episode yeah. whenever it comes it'll be here and hopefully i will say this i hope that a link to the past is our last isolation episode I hope after that we feel comfortable just recording together. Yeah, um, same here. Uh, and this is good. and this will be either a, uh, a horrible thing to hear or the greatest announcement we've ever made, depending on where you stand on this. Until we're in the room together again, there will be no more cold opens. <laughs> there will be no more dumb skits. Uh, yes, yeah. So uh, you're either going to be uh, shouting hallelujah or you're going to be crying uh, into your you know, as you're taking a shower, like I always do. I can't take a shower without a good cry. Uh, but Trevor, uh, I think we've had a great show here. I'm very proud of it. Great's a strong word, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, this uh, episode brought to you by Chapstick. That's right. Brought to you by Chapstick. Chapstick, uh, you melt in the pocket. That's just gross. It's, ugh, it's oozing out. That is, man, what a, what a way to end That's it. what just, I wanted to leave people with. That's my choice. <laughs> I've never been I've never felt more lucky to be your friend than in this moment yes. right now. Uh so thank you everybody. We appreciate all of you. We'll we'll holler at you later. Uh stay tuned for more retro blist. <laughs>